Hi, I'm Seamless, and because I felt like doing more things today, this is the recap video for the fourth sound design experiment thing. Um, I decided this immediately after finishing the track from scratch stream uh, for the Subcon Dubstep, and I guess this is technically a track from scratch, but uh, this is much more neandering and not really, not really, uh, it was more, it was just some experimentation, but I, I didn't really mean this to be a track from scratch. So let's uh, have a look at what this sounds like in a second. What is this? Oh yeah, it's a, whatever. Really? So this track began with me deciding to make a really big superior drummer patch. I didn't actually make a really big one. I made kind of like a regular size one. But, um, I mean, I guess I'm not using that many instruments, really. If I were using the full kit and I was doing what I was doing, this would be really big in terms of RAM. Right now, it's only 24 gig, 2.4 gigs on the 16-bit version, which if I had this off, it'd be 24-bit version, and it'd be kind of a lot. Um, essentially, what superior drummer, the whole thing about superior drummer, if you don't know what it is, is that um, it's... It's an acoustic drum library that um, when when I have an instrument set up and I hit and I hit it or I play it with a MIDI note, um, it doesn't it triggers the sound and it plays it. But it's not just saying this is this is just only just it's just coming from this one thing. Instead of doing it per instrument basis like most drum samplers used to do, a lot of, a lot of them do it this way now. Um, it plays it all by mic position. So like when I hit a kick drum. Uh, if I have all the mics set up, which right now I do, it's playing uh, uh, the sound as according to the mic inside the kick drum, inside the right up in front of the head, the one outside the kick drum, outside the back, uh, overheads, ambient mics, chamber mics, also uh, bleed. I have, I've, set up, I've set up bleed into the individual instruments. So when I hit the kick drum, we're actually hearing it inside the snare. You can kind of hear it doing it inside the snare, inside the tom mics, inside the, the hat mic. It's bleeding in there so that we when we have it set up to have all the bleed with all the mics and all set up like that we can treat superior drummer like it's an acoustic drum recording because that's exactly how you handle acoustic, actual acoustic drum recordings um it's obviously a little bit more clean than a real acoustic drum recording but has that just enough dirtiness to it that it sounds a lot more authentic Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Sounds a little bit less out there because I'm compressing the hell out of it, but that's okay. Um, and then I made this bass. Might do a how to bass on this later, but just for, real quick. Um, this began its life as a citrus. The cool thing I did here is that I turned I turned a square wave. I just, if I just make a square. Like, yay, square. And I converted the side harmonics, and then I went randomized phase. And then I made some of them regular phase. You can kind of see which ones I did. And the rest of them kept random. And I am putting this against a, um, a sine wave on it. That's operator two here. And this sine wave is, is pitched differently. So that's why we're getting the Reese motion as from this guy being different. But because um, all the harmonics are coming from the saw, or the square wave, uh, the fact that it's causing the Reese is only happening on the low end, which means we don't get a lot of detuning, which is nice. Um, I'm also FMing uh, the square by a really high-pitched triangle wave for not any particular reason, because I thought it was not cool. Um, I'm distorting it pretty heavily, and I have a really thin bandpass. A thinner than usual bandpass. Usually it's like kind of up here, but now it's like down here. It's, it's a high-resonance bandpass, or a low-bandwidth bandpass. Um, I break out... This 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 was going to be just a sub-reinforcement, but it's actually the entire signal. with a little bit of EQing business going on there. And what else is going on up here is there's a chorus into a compressor, then it's compressing it, then there's a phaser into an EQ, and this EQ is actually a peak filter. It was going to be another bandpass, but now it's just it's just being a peak filter. That's what this green guy is. Yellow guy is a bandpass, green guy is peak filter. 
And that kind of changes the overall character of it. It also kind of gives it a little bit of a band passy feel. <laughs> It can be kind of neat. Uh, that is being distorted again. And then it goes to Valhalla Room for reverb. And then it's being compressed pretty heavily again. And then it's EQ'd to color. The compression is, is the, uh, after the reverb is kind of cool because it gives it like a little bit of an like, aftertouch kind of feel. The second bass that I made is actually a clone of that, of that bass with some changes made. Um... I put in a billion more choruses. Uh, the at, at the level here, I ring modulated the square wave with this this shape here. Um, then I believe I also did some other things. Nope, that's that. But then I'm automating. Um, I'm automating the mod input of oscillator one, which has not just the ring modulation, but also the uh, triangle wave, which is half the pitch here. Um, that's this guy, and this is the bandpass from up here. <laughs> I left the secondary uh, EQ peak static just to a point where I thought it sounded good at the time. The, the compression at the end is a lot harder, which is why we're getting a much more pronounced uh, reverb kind of release. I made this weird chord. Uh, this is actually a preset for my track Empire from a long time ago, which is also a drum and bass track, which is why it kind of works so well. Along with the sound being weird itself, I also decided I also kind of made a weirdly voiced chord. The tonic here is F, but I put in a, a major seven and a, th a ma minor three and a four. And then I just kind of put random notes around. Like the, the notes I decided to put down were mostly visually decided not so much because I, I thought the progression was needed. We can barely hear it anyway. And also the, the, the tone is being uh, convoluted by the vocoder. I'm also low passing it. I automate this guy, the pitch here. Thought it sounded cool. The the clowniness of it is because I have a really low band bandwidth setting, really like regular order and high band count, and then like all the really, all the time variables are pretty freaking low with the minimum time, minimum times disabled, so they are actually as low as they say they are. So it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Apparently, recording was the last straw in terms of my underruns here. So yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, I don't even know how I'd turn this into a real a real track, just because I haven't listened to the genre of this in so long. Like this is very much like a, a callback to like the old, not the oldest school, but pretty old school drum and bass. And like, I'd have to go, I'd have to go, uh, what? listen to a whole bunch of that just to remember what the structure was like, because I don't. This is a lot of fun. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.